monster. He was with Melchior. There was something different about him. He wasn't a Moloch, though, right? <sighs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he's a demon. But why would the Abbey be working with a demon? He could be a Therian, maybe. I mean, there was Medissa and Kamoana. No, I don't think so. The Abbey keeps their Therians behind barriers and bound to Earth Pulse points. A Therian can't send malevolence to Inominot while walking freely. That's correct. And besides, Orthrus was already here. In any case, now we know Melchior has a mean-looking bodyguard in addition to his illusions. That'll take quite a lot to stop him. Aye. That's a fact. Your style is really... You know what you're... Eleanor Hume, reporting for duty. <laughs> Eleanor, there's something I have to ask. What is it? Did you leak our plans to the Abbey? Uh, Eleanor hasn't done anything like that. Then how do you explain Melchior and his illusions already waiting for us when we got to a ball? I promised you that I would work together with you until I found the truth for myself. I'm not up to any tricks. It's far too late for that now. Exactly what a guilty party would say. If anyone's suspicious here, I'd say it's you, Magilu. No tricks. <laughs> I don't even know what a trick is. <sighs> Enough. If Eleanor was leaking information, then Titania would surely be under attack by now. Right. I'm sure the Abbey would love to have those Therians back. But the enemy was in that village waiting in ambush. The Abbey isn't foolish. They figured out by now that we're rounding up the Therians. They'll have left traps for us with each remaining one. It's the obvious move. All right. If that's how you see it, I'll stand down. So you trust me then? No. I'm saying that anything the Abbey tries, I'll be ready for it. <sighs> oh, such a brave, determined soul. <laughs> Eleanor, does the Abbey possess an art that can control demons? Not that I've ever heard of. Besides, if they could control demons, there'd be no need to resurrect Inominot, would there? Can't argue with that. But Melchior was obviously in control of that demon. How did he manage that? You can't tether them like a Moloch, and Melchior wasn't using oaths or mana to compel him. No, this was something more like mind control. Mind control? Let's say you know your target's innermost desires, you simply conjure the right illusion. Show them what would push their buttons in just the right way. Ah, if you can create an illusion of something someone really wants, you can control them. Exactly. You can force a powerful burden upon your target's psyche. Until their spirit breaks, that is. What happens when they break? Depends on the target. They might become an empty shell, they might go wild with desire, Eeny teeny spiny crow. You sure know a lot about this. Now that you put it that way, why would I know so much about it? <gasps> what if someone is controlling me, making me say these very words? How horrifying! I believe I'll take your words with a grain of salt. Hmm. Move it or
If you want to live, get out of my way. Listen, Eleanor really isn't spying on us. I was with her almost every minute, and when I wasn't, Velvet was watching her. And she's a woman who keeps her promises. She wouldn't lie to... Lafayette. We understand, Lafayette. It's Eleanor. If she were lying to herself to somehow keep spying on us, the guilt would fill her with malevolence. I see. You're right. The fact that I haven't turned into a dragon proves that. Thank you. Both of you. I didn't think you were giving them information intentionally. But there are illusionists like Melchior out there. That means we can't rule out someone recording your thoughts in secret. I don't think we need to worry about that either. Not with you and Lafayette always near. <sighs> now that that's settled, it's time for you all to testify to my innocence. That could be difficult. What? Well, okay. Why don't you start off by telling us all about the time you sold us out to Teresa back in Helleviz? Oh, why bring up that old yam? You're a very vindictive man, do you know that? You're just figuring that out? <laughs> well, there's your proof, at least. You wouldn't make much of a spy. <laughs> she really wouldn't. Hey, that's not what I meant! You were mean! <laughs>
Woohoo! My sister's making us pickle board meatballs for dinner tonight! Hey! What did I tell you about bothering travelers? Sorry about that. He's totally obsessed with food. That's all right. Pickle board meatballs, huh? Sounds delicious. They're really super tasty, but Sis says that they used to taste even better. Why is that? We used to get deliveries of fresh, delicious prickle boar meat from the nearby village of a ball. But in the advent three years ago, demons attacked the village, and now it's gone. It's such a tragedy. If they only could have held out for just one more day, I'm sure Lord Artorius would have saved them. Artorius. Right. Our town decided to make a new holiday marking the day that Lord Artorius became the Shepherd. Three years ago, when the Malachim appeared on the advent, Taliesin was the first town that Lord Artorius saved. We hold great pride at being the city where humanity first struck back against the demons. That explains why you'd celebrate his ascension, but wasn't a ball closer to his heart? You may be right about that. Not being able to save a ball was a terrible agony for Lord Artorius. Even though he killed the demons that destroyed the village, he couldn't bring back the lives that had been lost. If Lord Artorius had gone to a ball first, our city might have been destroyed instead. We won't forget the tragedy that befell a ball. That's the other purpose of this holiday. Remembrance. That's right. Lives lost can never be brought back. Wow, the weather's just swell. It's something I've said every day for three months now. Huh? But wasn't there just a heavy fog? Nope. Never seen a wisp of fog in this village. It's been sunny so long, I think I might dry up. That means that fog was just another of Melchior's illusions. Seems that way. Excuse me. My partner and I here would like to put on a comedy show if it's possible. Ah. Not often you run into someone with a real fire in their eyes. All right. Show me what you got. With pleasure. Eleanor, I'm impressed. I didn't know you had this sort of initiative. You just have to do what you have to do, right? Besides, if we pull this off, it could be our chance to get closer to Modulu. Did you say Modulu? I haven't seen her recently, but she seems to be making a name for herself in Logris. Yeah, her dances are really beautiful. Do you know her? I do. Her and her teacher, Valta. Now, I'm not saying Majalu isn't great, but Valta was utterly sublime. I worry about him pushing Majalu so much, to be honest. He's never been one to accept compromise in his art. Huh. I didn't know that. We don't have time to stop and feel bad for our rivals. Did you memorize the script? Of course I did. And I won't tolerate any slip-ups from you either. <laughs> Hearing that just makes me more motivated. Well, let's get going. We've got a show to put on. Hi there! Thanks for having us again! The Bienfu Keepers! Magic and Sam! Whoa, back it up. Again? If we're supposed to be regulars here, then why does everyone look like they've never heard of Bienfu? And what's with this Magic of Zam stuff? Is that some kind of spell? Uh, Gosh, it's really been getting cold here lately. Are you just going to ignore my questions? What does it matter? I 
Aren't you too cold to worry about things like that? Does this feel summery to you? I can be cold and ask you questions at the same time. Actually, it is rather cold. See? I said it was cold! In fact, I've been so cold lately I even set fire to my clothes! Isn't that going too far? No, well, that's how cold I was! In fact, that wasn't enough, so I set the house on fire too! Your house? Why would you do that? Oh, don't worry. It doesn't bother me at all. And who said it was my house? The one I set on fire was yours. <laughs> That's a crime, you know. Huh? What's wrong? That's not in the script. Arson is a serious crime. Well, yes, but... In the script, the punchline was supposed to be... But when I saw how much it would cost to replace them, I got the chills. Yeah, but I got into the moment and thought I could ad-lib something better. You're advocating something morally abhorrent. Change it back. What's the big deal? You're getting worked up over a joke. Crime is not a joke. Even speaking as a normal citizen, I can't condone speech that promotes such a horrifically antisocial act. Oh, now you've got me all mad. I give up. For good. No, it's bad. I said I give up. For good. No, it's bad. <laughs> Deepest apologies for putting on an act about something so terrible today, sir. Well, the whole thing was meant to be about morals anyway, so... How did we do? <sighs> Can I just ask you one question? Are you for real? Yes, I am. I should have known. There's one of them off-limit Class 4 islands that folks call Serpent Isle. Place has been overrun with snakes since forever. I hate the things, so it sounds like hell to me. But I've heard there's a woman who actually lives there. Whatever for? Why would anyone want to live in a place like that? I know. It's mighty strange. Place supposedly is crawling with demons, too. Last time I was in the area, I checked it out. Kept my distance, of course. Used my spyglass. And? Was she there? Aye, she was. Except she looked like a snake herself. I mean, she was human up top, but her face was a weird color, and her lower half was all slithery and wiggly. Ugh. Creep me out. A snake woman, huh? Even worse, looked like you couldn't swing a cat without hitting a snake. <sighs> Just the thought of it keeps me awake at night. You should have a stiff drink and get some sleep before you pass out on deck. I'll tell Benwick to give you an extra ration. Wow. Uh, thanks a lot, first mate. I appreciate it. <laughs> I ought to pester him for some of that aged reserve he keeps hidden away. Welcome back. Did you find the Therian? Yeah. We're bringing these two back to Titania. Dogs? Look, lizards, no problem. Walking hunks of armor, I can deal with, but dogs on my ship? You're not a dog person. I was, uh, bit by one when I was a kid. Then you've got nothing to worry about. If they're biting anyone on this ship, it'll be me. Uh, are you okay, Velvet? Oh, sure. They're just dogs. No, I mean, in general. <sighs> Fine, they can come aboard. I'll take us back to Titania. We have to take good care of Orthy and Russ. That's on you. They won't let me near. Ah. Uh, yeah, well, what do you expect? You only killed their master. Don't worry. I'll take responsibility. You mustn't. They're quite vicious, you know. I just asked them if they wanted to be friends, and they suddenly bit me. I'm sure you said something to irritate them, like, I'll make you my minions! You had it coming. She... she knows! 
But you have Therians to find, Lafayette. You won't be able to look after them all the time. I suppose... What should I do? You could ask Kamoana and Medissa. Kamoana said she once had a dog. Even if they get a little rowdy, Medissa will be around to keep them safe. That's a good idea. I'll go ask them. Thanks. We can't be killing off Therians. Besides, they remind me of Nico. Velvet. You want a pet dog, Lumpy Set? You should go to the Abbey then. Why the Abbey? Because the place is full of the shepherd's lap dogs. <laughs> get it? Lap dogs! Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I devoured them again. No, don't. So, you said your little brother made this copy. He could read the ancient tongue. That's amazing. <laughs> Luffy was different from most other kids. He read books a lot because his body was so weak. He studied all the time, so that he could be ready to travel the world one day. Which was kind of funny, considering he'd hide in my bed whenever he had a nightmare. Really? But, I don't care that he got scared. I just wanted him to live. That's why I... Have to. Velvet! I'll devour as much as it takes. I will have vengeance. Velvet! Done. The art is attuned to you. Thank you. This time I'll make sure to finish what I set out to do. I've got to say, I didn't think you had it in you, Oscar. I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Lord Artorius! Go back outside, Teresa. We'll see you when we're done. Are the rumors true? Are you using that experimental art on Oscar? It is true. <sighs> I was under the impression it was still incomplete, sir. Yep. There's still a potentially fatal weakness for its channeler. We've taken the theory as far as it will go. The next step is to learn its control and actual practice. Don't tell me you intend to test it against that Therian! Please, let me do it. I should be the one, not him! You are not strong enough. Th then at least let me back him up! So you can take the enemy out before Oscar uses the art? A noble plan, but I'm afraid it'd mess everything up. So! It was my idea to volunteer, sister. I failed at Titania, and allowed the Therian to be stolen from Palamedes. I need to atone for my mistakes. Then let me come with you. I have different orders for you. Teresa Linares, you are hereby relieved of your duties as an exorcist, and are to return your Moloch. Relieved? 
gift of duty? Why? For our plans to be realized, we require an especially strong Malak. We've analyzed your Malak's dormant abilities, and he is of considerable power, on the same level as the young Malak who betrayed us for the enemy. Simply put, you just don't got what it takes to handle him, sweetheart. When this is all over, I'd love to have some of your homemade cooking again, sister. I could go for that quiche you used to make. How can you talk of that right now? Lord Artorius. I know what you're going to ask. Yes, Oscar, when you fulfill your mission, I will make Teresa an exorcist again. Oscar. Are you doing this for... Don't worry about me. I'd go to the ends of the earth and back for a plate of your delicious quiche. What should I do? If I don't do something, he'll... Huh? What's this? I'm... receptive? To that art? And to you? Take it easy, Velvet. You've been out for three days. Then that's three days wasted. What's the situation? Well, let's see. For one thing, Grimoire's been deciphering that ancient book. She says that this new copy is complete. All the pages we were missing are there. As for the dogs, Kamawana's taken a real shine to them. All right then. Now we just need to find that last Therian. Velvet, no! I said take it easy. Seriously. Oh, hold on. Have you not had anything to eat? Um, well, I just thought, since you hadn't either... Are you serious? Why would you do a full thing like that? You'll die if you don't eat. Actually, I... He won't die if he doesn't eat. Malakim don't actually depend on food for sustenance. If they do eat, it's only as a quirky hobby. All right, if you're sure. If you feel like going hungry, it's your life. But there's no sense in doing it on my account. Huh. <sighs> Good to see you're feeling better again. As you probably noticed, we made it back to Titania already. Sorry to keep you all waiting on me. Get everyone together. We meet now. <sighs> well, that could have gone better. I just wanted to better understand the hardships Velvet's suffering through. It seems unfair for her to bear all of it alone. Hmm. Well, she's... how can I put it? A very straightforward kind of person. But nothing gets under her skin like a clumsy display of sympathy. What should I do about her then? For now, just get something in your tummy. Any good warrior knows you eat when you have the chance. Even Malakim have more strength on a full stomach than an empty one, don't they? Yeah. It's true. Food will fill an empty stomach. But what is there to fill an empty heart, I wonder? Time for some grub, Lafayette. What are you hungry for? Hmm. I'll have some stuffed giant squid. Or prison crab dumplings. 
Poor sea snake bowl! It's your first meal in three days, right? Better stick with something mild or you'll be sorry. How about a risotto or a vegetable rice soup? That could be nice. I could go for some borscht or shark fin and egg soup. For dessert, I'll have a sweet bean and jelly fruit cup, a giant parfait, and a triple berry cake. Zip it, Mogilu. Oh well, I'm getting full just thinking about it. I think I'd like some rice porridge with a pickled plum and baby sardines on top. Ooh, an austere choice. And an apple. In that case, you should have some apple boo. Apple boo? What on earth is that? It's just grated apples. But when my brother wasn't feeling well, I often fed it to him. I think I'd like to try some. If you insist, I'll make some for you. At least it's something I can make without needing to taste it. Okay, I insist. Okay. If you're already making some, I'd like... Zip it, Mogilu! I haven't seen many Abbey patrol ships around here of late. I noticed that too. Do you think something happened? The Bloodwing said the Abbey's been quiet everywhere. Apparently, some bad demons and a cursed pirate crew have been giving them trouble, and they can't spare the men to patrol the outer seas. That's Ifreed's pirates for you. Always gathering information and keeping on their guard. A cursed pirate crew? Isn't that us? If the info's sound, we've really made a name for ourselves. <laughs> Abbey ships run and hide when they see us coming. Reason dictates that we avoid hopeless fights. Ooh, Shepard Artorius, you're my hero! <laughs> if only our enemies were truly that dumb. Sadly, the world isn't that forgiving. We can't drop our guard. Aye, I've contacted some fishermen friends of mine. They'll let us know if they notice anything fishy. We've got the first mate's curse to deal with. We can never be too careful. Yeah, with that Reaper's curse hanging over us, we don't have room to relax. <laughs> well, at least they're not too bothered by it. Okay, Fee, I need you to find us our next Earth Pulse point. I found one, but it's really, really far, way up in the northeast. Hmm. If it's that far out, it has to be an Engand. Engand is a collection of small islands. There's a comparatively bigger one called Lionel Island, but that's the exception. Yeah, I think the Earth Pulse point's probably out there. Endgand, huh? Those waters are haunted by ghost ships, you know. Ghost ships? Yep. Legend has it they snatch up wrongdoers who bear lingering regrets and whisk them away to that eternal voyage. That doesn't sound promising. Currents from all over the world converge in Endgand's waters, so a lot of shipwrecks from distant seas end up there as their final resting place. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh. So that's where the stories of ghost ships come from. Boo, you guys have no imagination. I'd rather they stay imaginary myself. We should still be careful. We'll be fine. Ghost ship, exorcist, whatever comes along. We'll be the ones to administer their last rites. Just one Therian to go. When I escaped, Ceres told me that Artorius could still be killed. That means she must have known everything. That Enominot is incomplete. How Therians work. But why did she betray Artorius? Why did she give me her strength? I know that try as you might, some fires can never fully be extinguished. But what made you go so far as to feed yourself to me? Tell me, why did you do it, sis? Oh, what am I saying? Ceres was a Moloch. Just a Moloch. Just focus on what has to be done. Once the Therians are all together, I can end this. That's all that matters. That's all I need to think about. <laughs>